Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Kerr Designs. Thanks so much for stopping by today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting tutorials and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. I have another project for you today in my Chop It Up series. I'm going to be using 12x12 cardstock to create a fun project today. For my Chop It Up inspired project today, I'm going to be using my Gemvelope template reference book. And inside of this book, I have tons of different templates that I've designed for different style of card bases, envelopes, boxes, tags, and so much more. Today, we're going to be working with the A7 or the 5x7 envelope. And I'm going to be creating that out of my 12x12 paper packs. If you watched any of my videos before, you know that I am addicted to these paper packs. I have more than I could ever need. And if you notice, guys, this is a new one that I'm cracking into because I just can't help myself. And uh, this book was full of beautiful designs and I love the little snowman patterns and the entire theme. I just love it. Every year, Recollections comes out with a different variation of the safe freeze patterns. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip through this book and decide what I wanna do. So I'm just kinda getting an idea of the different patterns inside this book. And then as I flip through, I'm kinda just getting a grasp of what sort of patterns I think will go together well so that I can select two types of pattern paper. And so far, this is what I've got. So I'm going to use this craft snowflake and these beautiful Christmas balls. I'm going to be making two five by seven envelopes. So after taking a peek at my template reference guide, it tells me that I need a sheet of cardstock that measures eight and a half inches by 11 inches in order to create this envelope. So I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna take this 12 inch piece of paper and across the 12 inch side, I'm gonna cut at eight and a half inches and then I'm gonna rotate my cardstock and cut at 11. And then I'll end up with three pieces and I'm just gonna set those aside and I'm going to do the same thing to my next pattern. The first cut I'm going to make is going to be at eight and a half inches and then I'll rotate the cardstock and then I'm gonna cut at 11 inches. So this is going to give me two sheets of paper that measure eight and a half by 11 and then we've got a couple of good sized scraps left over and we're going to incorporate all of these into our cards. So let's set this aside and go ahead and start working on the envelope. So I'm gonna pull in my scoreboard and I'm gonna score one piece at a time and I'm gonna follow along the steps in my template reference guide and it's gonna tell me the measurements that I need to score and what parts to cut off. For step one and two, we're going to use the scoreboard and then for the rest of the steps, we're going to do some cutting, okay? So let's start with the first pattern. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over to the white side because I find that I'll get a better score when I score on both sides. So the first score mark I'm going to make is going to be at half an inch. So I'm gonna make sure my paper is nice and tight up in that corner and I'll score at a half an inch. And then my next score is gonna be at eight inches. So we're scoring this across the eight and a half inch side, I should mention. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna reinforce those score marks on the other side. Because this is a pattern paper with a white core cardstock, I don't wanna get any cracking. So I find by scoring on both sides of the paper, then we get a nice good scored impression without damaging the paper. Okay, I'm gonna flip my cardstock and across the 11 inch side, this is step number two in my template reference guide. We're going to score at two and a quarter Okay, you don't want to press too hard because we don't want to crack the cardstock, so make sure you're being careful and mindful there. And then the second score will be at seven and a half inches. And I'm going to flip my piece of paper over and I'm going to reinforce those score marks once again at two and a quarter inches and seven and a half inches. Okay, and I can do that for both of my sheets of cardstock. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and start cutting these up. So on Step number three, you'll see the little red areas that are marked off where we're going to cut. Now, because I've made this envelope a billion times, I'm gonna add step three and four together where I just get this little angle cut. It's like a 45 degree angle. So you can do this in one swoop. So you cut up and then turn it into a 45 degree angle, and this is what it should look like. 
I'm going to do that for all four corners. So you'll see the little score marks there will give you a guide of where you're cutting and you want to cut right along there to get nice straight edges. Okay, perfect, looks good. And then we'll continue doing that for the other two sides of this envelope. Cut down the score mark and turn for a 45 degree angle. All right, looks good. And now for this one, we're gonna start creating the 45 degree angle and then cut upwards to cut off the rest. All right, so I'm gonna do that for both of my pieces of paper so we get two identical sheets that look the same. So we're kind of producing these in an assembly line fashion. So we're doing all the same steps at the same time. All right, so next we're going to start creasing the score marks on our envelopes. So this is where you'll notice the benefits of scoring on both sides. You get nice good score marks with no paper cracking and everything stays intact and looks great. You're gonna have a nice professional looking envelope. So you'll notice that for this type of envelope you have a smaller flap and a larger flap. So when you go to close the envelope, the larger flap is going to be like the bottom, like the little pocket where your card will go into and then the smaller one will be where you add adhesive to close it up. And now let's add some adhesive on that larger flap, just along the side where it's going to adhere to those little half inch scored pieces, if that makes sense. Okay, add a little bit of liquid glue here. You want something nice and strong that's gonna hold up good. I find tape runner is good too, but sometimes in drier climates, the tape can kind of pop off and you don't want your mail coming apart. So just be safe and use some liquid glue to adhere this. Just don't overdo it because you don't want to glue your envelope shut from the inside. So just be careful and mindful when applying your glue. I'm going to use my bone folder to press in those edges nice and good. All right, and then I'm just gonna check inside of my envelope to make sure I didn't glue it shut. It looks great. Perfect. All right, the next step for this envelope is to round the corners. I'm gonna grab my corner rounder and I'm just gonna use the half inch side on my corner rounder and round the corners on this envelope. It gives it a nice finished touch, a little bit of a professional look, and you've got this gorgeous handmade envelope. The two envelopes are identical, it's perfection. Super easy to make. We didn't really do anything complicated. We didn't need any special dies or tools or anything like that. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive to the closing flap of this envelope and I'll just use double-sided tape and I'll put it on the very top, top, top of that flap. I'll leave the release paper on that so that when I'm ready to send this envelope in the mail, it'll be ready to close up. All right, now let's move back along to the template reference guide. In my book, I've given you the measurements as well for the different size matting layers for your cards. So for the A7, I'm going to be working with like either the four by six or the four and a quarter by six and a quarter. I haven't quite figured it out yet. Um, I'm just gonna play around with these strips and kind of figure out what it is that I wanna do. So I know that I'm going to mix and match these patterns. And so what I decide to do after playing for about a half an hour, we need one piece that measures three and a half by four and one and a half by three and a half. After cutting your envelope, the piece that you're going to have left over is three and a half inches by four. So out of each piece of those, you're going to cut one piece that measures three and a half by four and one piece that measures one and a half by three and a half. And that's how we get this design. And I'm gonna mix and match the two pieces to create this beautiful card layout. And I like how these two patterns complement each other. There's a little bit of that craft sort of in the elements of the Christmas bulbs where it almost looks gold. So I think it just ties in together nicely. So in order to just give a finishing touch to those two pieces of pattern paper, I'm gonna apply a little foil strip. I'll link to a video where I showed you how to create these foil strips with just simple foil cardstock and some double-sided adhesive. Super fun trick. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And that's about all I'm going to do in terms of decorating. I've got this Gina K Design stamp set. This is a mini set that was free with a purchase from last month. I'll link in the description box down below the products that I used in today's video. 
So I'm going to use a scrap piece of pattern paper and I'm going to use the Gina K Design Slate Ink. I find that the slate ink is not so dark, dark black and it kind of matches that the Christmas bulb pattern where it's not black but almost like a smoky gray. I'm going to stamp those greetings with an acrylic block and I'm going to trim them out and just get the simplest little greeting greetings of the season and I'm going to adhere that down right on that little foil strip where the transition of the pattern paper is and that's cute I think it looks really nice and I'm not going to do anything else to these cards nope that's a lie <laughs> I'm going to use the last scrap of paper here that we got when we were cutting up our envelope and I'm just going to adhere that on the inside of the card and I'm just going to run a little bit of tape runner, stick it on the bottom and then trim off the excess. And then we kind of tie in the elements of our card from the envelope to the front of the card carried all the way through to the inside of the card. And then we have this beautiful coordinating set. I love the way these look together. Such a lovely, unique, one of a kind Christmas card. All right, so what we have left are a couple of scraps. Now I'm going to show you what to do with these scraps so that we use all of this 12 by 12 paper. I think this is a great idea. So I'm just going to trim these down to make sure that they're both the same size. And what I'm going to do is turn these into two little Christmas tags. So for these tags, you can just leave them white on the back or you can take the two scraps and glue them together to create one tag. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to create something special. I'm going to grab my scissors. I've got these two pieces of cardstock stacked together and I'm just going to create a little bit of an angle cut in the corner of my tag. And then I'm going to flip the two pieces around and then that gives me a little guide on where to cut so that we get perfectly matching even tags without having to fiddle with weird pieces of paper or figure out weird measurements or anything like that or even having fancy tools you just need scissors for this I love this little trick and it creates a perfect symmetrical even looking tag every time okay so now I'm gonna punch a hole in these I just got a crop a dial here you can use eyelets and set them into these little holes to create a stronger reinforcement for your string but I'm not gonna go that fancy um, but I am going to go fancy with a string. I'm going to put some beautiful green and red string and some gold baker's twine and just make it look extra. I also added a little strip of that foil cardstock to my tag. And uh, here we go. We've got two gorgeous looking tags. I stamped a little bit of warm winter wishes on the back of them. You can put two from, write a message, whatever. And then you've got a beautiful tag that matches gorgeously with your card, your envelope, the inside. It's amazing. So I also had another idea for these little tags. If you had a gift card, I just cut one up and I have a piece of cardstock to make it look like a gift tag. And you could just tape it right to the tag, just like that. And then you have your little message or your to and from on the back, or you can tape it to the back, whatever you want to do. And then you can pop it into the card and then slide everything into your envelope. And then there's your Christmas gift all set to go and everything coordinates together nicely. I think this is a great way to use up that pattern paper and also use up those scraps so we don't have any leftovers hanging around and, and we've got gorgeous projects in the end. So I hope that this video inspires you to pull out some of your 12 by 12 paper and make some really amazing Christmas projects and cards and designs and envelopes and all sorts of things. If you're interested in any of the products that I've used in today's video, including my Gemvelope template reference book, you'll find it in the description box down below. My template book ships to Canada and US only, but the digital downloads are available for purchase worldwide. So I hope that you'll check that out. So coming up on screen are a couple of videos that I think that you may enjoy. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.